Hi guys, it's Ashley here from Predator Labs. Today, we're going to be counting down our top five picks for the most extreme predators to have ever existed. Today, there are many ferocious hunters that call Earth their home. Therefore, it's no surprise that many unusual predators roamed ancient prehistoric Earth, where body design limits were made to be broken by evolution. Lurking in the late Devonian oceans about 380 million years ago was a ferocious predatorial fish. Douglas Dias belonged to a group of now extinct fish called the Othrodars. At around 8 to 9 meters in length and 4 tons in weight, it was truly a monster of the ancient seas. Its heavily armored head was covered by fused bone plates around 5 centimeters thick, along with a massively powerful self-sharpening jaw. By the time Douglas Dias was fully grown, its jaw had distributed a bite force of just over half a ton. What's really interesting is that the Douglas Dias teeth aren't really teeth at all. They're actually armored jaw plates that grew down from the skull and into the mouth area. These plates form the razor-sharp, teeth-like plates which sheared against each other like self-sharpening scissors. This feature, along with the Dunculus Dias immense size, moved it to the top of the food chain, making it the king of the Devonian seas. A creature this size needed massive amounts of food, and Dunculus Dias was known for eating anything in its path, including others of their own kind. In fact, this Atherdire fish was thought to have sometimes died from overeating. The fossilized remains of regurgitated fish were found alongside skeletons, a grisly reminder of its voracious appetite. Now we move forward in time over 100 million years to dive into the depths of Permian-aged horrors to find our number four pick. When you think of sharks today, the common pop culture references and fear factors come into mind. This shark-like creature known as the Helicoprion takes the idea of a budsaw jaw to literally. Similar to modern sharks and rays, Helicoprion had a skeleton made of cartilage, which does not fossilize well. This has hampered our ability to reconstruct its body form, and over the years, several reconstructions of Helicoprion have been suggested. However, our best guess is that it was enormous, weighing half a ton and measuring 6 meters or more in length. Helicoprion didn't lose its teeth like most living in ancient sharks, but instead, it possessed a very distinct spiral loop or whorl of over 125 teeth in its lower jaw. These rotated back in a spiral, much like an actual chainsaw. These teeth whorls were much more durable than the rest of Helicobron's cartilaginous skeleton, so they are preserved reasonably well in the fossil record. This fearsome grinder is believed to have caught nearby fish and snapped down with its row of serrated teeth, often targeting soft-swimming creatures unfortunate to come too close to Helicobron. Helicobron was an efficient, if somewhat unconventional looking hunter. At the number 3 spot, we move forward in time to find a large reptile named Tanistrophus, living in the Triassic period 242 million years ago. This bizarre looking animal had an extremely elongated neck like a giraffe and a long, slender body similar to a crocodile. Tanistrophus measured about 6 meters in length and weighed 150 kilograms, with its neck taking up more than half of the length of its entire body. Tanistrophus appears to have been piscivorous and may have eaten fish. However, it possessed no flippers nor paddles, suggesting it wasn't a permanent water dweller. Likewise, scientists have proposed that Tanistrophus simultaneously lived in shallow water and shoreline environments. It was an opportunistic hunter. It caught both land-dwelling critters like smaller reptiles and insects, while in the water, it preyed on fish. Tanistrophus' neck was utilized for surprise ambush attacks as it nabbed unsuspecting prey, a handy feature as it was considered a slow swimmer. The skull's anatomy and nostril placement revealed that it was primarily water dwelling. Its teeth are very pointy, it may have grabbed and latched on prey with ease, useful when dealing with wriggling, slippery fish. We go way, way back in time now for our number two pick. Anomalocaris was a bizarre and extremely odd looking animal which lived in the sea during the Cambrian period, some 500 million years ago. This was at a time where all major animal groups were beginning to first appear in the sea. A mystery like no other, the Anomalocaris shows the looks of a mutated shrimp with segmented body parts and an alien-like face. While it shares some similarities with modern arthropods, it does not possess jointed legs, giving it something of an identity crisis. Anomalocaris grew an estimated 1 meter in length, dwarfing many other animals that lived alongside it. It had two prominent and powerful rasping appendages on the front of its head. These were designed to grab and crush prey. The results in body parts and fluids are consumed by a gaping pineapple-shaped inner mouth. The streamlined body of this arthropod-like predator likely made it an efficient swimmer, capable of gliding through the water with ease and making it capable of maneuvers necessary for hunting, stalking, and overcoming prey. 
For our number one pick, we move forward again in time to the Cretaceous period during the age of the dinosaurs to find the largest terrestrial hunter ever found. A massive theropod known as the Spinosaurus was a gigantic predatory dinosaur. It possessed a very distinct sail-like structure on its back and walked predominantly on two legs as it roamed near bodies of water, such as coastal areas. Its sheer size alone is deserving of this nomination. Spinosaurus grew to 18 meters in length, much longer than the Tyrannosaurus, which reached about 12 meters. Spinosaurus is estimated to have weighed a staggering 22 tons. Spinosaurus appears to have lived a semi-aquatic lifestyle, suggesting it hunted both on land and in water. Despite its size, Spinosaurus appears to have been mostly a piscivore and specialized in ad adaptations for hunting in the water. Its slender head and flexible neck gave it an edge when catching swimming prey, desperately trying to escape. Similar to a crocodile, it may have gently moved its tail to swim quietly and stealthily in the water, so it can catch prey unsuspecting. Spinosaurus probably couldn't dive very deeply, so it likely hunted near the water's surface. There you have it, the number one most extreme predator of all time, Spinosaurus. Yet despite the differences between these predators, they all share the same but one single purpose, to survive. No matter how bizarre, if it works in a living creature, nature will find a way to adapt and utilize new body designs. The same rule applies for prey, and this cat and mouse relationship represents the flip side of this evolutionary arms race. The key is to adapt, optimize, and dominate, even if it means going outside the box. Do you agree with our top five? Comment below and tell us what extreme predators you think should have made the list. And be sure to like, subscribe, and check out this channel for more videos.